So to briefly give you an overview, uh, Clubfoot is not uh, a, a new condition. As you can see, uh, King Tutankhamun from uh, Egypt in the 13th century before Christ um, was diagnosed with a clubfoot. And you can see from this computer modeling, uh, which was made digitally from his mummy, uh, you can see that he has a vi visible clubfoot and also a scoliosis. If you look at this uh, picture in the Louvre Museum, you can see that uh, there's a painting by Jose de Ribera, which shows a clubfoot in a farmer boy. And uh, it's debatable whether this is a true clubfoot or whether it's arthrogripotic, because you can also see that his upper limb has uh, evidence of contractures as well, in addition to the clubfoot. So if you look at the treatment of clubfoot over the centuries, uh, you will realize that there's this pendulum uh, where the arc moves from conservative to surgical treatment and back to conservative treatment. That's interesting because that's true for various aspects of orthopedics, not just clubfoot. If you look at the 4th century BC, uh, Hippocrates, uh, who's the father of medicine, in fact recommended treating clubfoot by conservative methods. And he said that you should manipulate the foot gently and then uh, tie the foot up with resin bandages so as to correct the club foot. Surprisingly, if you're born in the 18th century, the treatment of club foot is actually surgical. And in fact, you'll see that Delpesh and Stromeo from Germany were strong proponents of the surgical treatment of club foot. In fact, um, Little, after whom Little's disease has been named, had a club foot which was treated by Stromeo with a tendoicalis tenotomy. If you go back again then to the uh, early, 18th, early 19th century, when plaster of Paris became uh, commonly used for different fractures, uh, Guerin, in fact, described the use of plaster of Paris to correct a club foot. But then again, you can see in the latter part of the 19th century, in the early 20th century, surgeries became popular once again. And you had advocates like Phelps, Brockman, and Steindler who described various posterior and medial releases and even bony surgeries at times to correct the club foot. Around the 1930s, again, conservative treatment became the norm and Hiram Kite from the Texas Scottish Rite Hospital became one of the most leading advocates for But again, towards the 1970s, the pendulum swung towards the posterior medial release, which was described by Turco and Simons. And finally, you can see that around the 1950s, and then again becoming popular since the last 20 or 30 years or so, the Ponsetti method, which method has seen a resurgence of interest. So this is an interesting thing that I have found from the history of literature, that though we consider conservative treatment to be something new, it's been there with us for centuries. And though we consider sometimes surgeries to be a 21st or 20th century phenomenon, Actually, it was described way earlier than what we assumed. So historically, if you look at the various treatment options available in literature, you can see that that's from Hippocrates, who described understanding the fact that the foot should be molded gently, almost like wax. Around the 19th century, club foot braces became popular, and the Thomas's wrench was actually used to forcibly correct the club foot into the corrected position. So it just shows that over the span of the centuries, how the treatment has evolved from being gentle to being forcible. And then again, to understand once again, that we have understood the concept of being really gentle when treating club feet. So here we see, um, I found this uh, pictures from Kite's uh, textbook. And this was his method of manipulation. As you can see here, the beautiful molding that the cast uh, has over the foot. And these are something that we need to emulate as orthopedic surgeons. I feel plastering has become a forgotten art. We have relinquished that role to plaster technicians and physiotherapists and other people. But I think the true skill of a surgeon is being able to apply a cast in a really well-molded fashion. And sometimes applying a good cast is more difficult than some surgeries that we do. And I think what we have learned from Kite over the last many years is this famous aphorism which is attributed to him, what is gained without force is achieved without harm. And that's absolutely true, not only for 
club foot of so many things in orthopedics where brute force is not required but gentleness for the soft tissue and the bones are crucial for us to get a good result as i've shown you around the 1970s starting with turco and the move of surgery uh various soft tissue procedures became the norm and i will show you some of this in in later slide but you can see this is the typical posterior medial release that was described by turco using a medial incision here you can see the exposure of the talonavicular joint here you can see the exposure of the subtalar and the ankle joints once again showing you the talonavicular joint exposure where you have the head of the talus exposed inside the foot and a subtalar exposure going circumferentially from medial to the lateral side you can achieve this by various incisions uh some of them are the posterior medial incision or you could use the cincinnati transverse incision popularized by crawford in 1980s around this around the same time uh, in another part of the world in the in in france the french method became popular and this was described by bens allen de meglio and i actually visited the center about uh, 15 years ago and i saw how they understood the gentleness that was required to manipulate a club foot each patient they would spend almost half an hour or so gently manipulating the foot by various different maneuvers and this is a video that i shot at the time of the uh, my visit there and as you can see again gentleness and patience was the key to achieving a club foot correction but what's become popular over the last 20 years or so where there's been a resurgence of interest is the ponsetti method and this is a method which has now been endorsed not only by the who but by various organizations around the world and if you understand what the ponsetti method is it has four important steps it has a specific method of manipulation to stretch the contracted ligaments there's a specific method of treatment and as you can see these are ponsetti's publications which have been over the years been described but what has become popular are the internet support groups and ponsetti himself said that it was because of the parents who formed these internet groups to popularize his method his publications as you can see are extremely popular and then in 1996 he published a book which i feel all of you all should read it's available as a free download from the ponsetti international association website and it's a fascinating account of how he devised this method and his understanding of what club foot actually is so these are the important publications and i would suggest anyone who's interested in club foot should read these publications because they give a beautiful understanding to this man's approach so if we look at what the goals of club foot treatment are whether it is by surgery or by conservative methods are to achieve a functional pain free normal looking plantigrade foot with good mobility without calluses and requiring no modified shoes if you try to understand the uh, uh, the reasons why the ponsetti method work in fact we need to go back before ponsetti and ponsetti himself has attributed his understanding of the foot to two to two important uh, uh, people far above from uh, france who described the the movement of the calcaneus like a boat in the ocean the way the boat rolls yaws and pitches that is the way the calcaneal moves as the foot goes from adduction into abduction and then again from uh, usen who described the axis of the tarsal joint not just like a mitered hinge but rotating around a moving axis and he defined this as a close kinematic chain which he called as dikinetischke and this is what we call as kinematic coupling of the subtalar joint so if you understand the functional anatomy of the subtalar joint this is the key to understanding the ponsetti method and as you can see here as a subtalar joint the axis is 45 degrees from above to below and 20 degrees from medial to lateral and what farabuff and usen showed from their thesis is that as you abduct the foot without touching the calcaneum because of the kinematic coupling of the subtalar joint the calcaneum will adduct will abduct resulting in correction of heel varus and equinus so this is the key to understanding the ponsetti technique 
It's not based on Ponzetti's own work, but he acknowledged the fact that previous biomechanists had understood the anatomy of the foot and the fact that because of the kinematic coupling of the subtalar joint, by abducting the forefoot, the hind foot would also correct. So the three important steps in the Ponsetti casting are to go exactly the way the deformity has been described, in the cave fashion. To correct cavus first by elevating the forefoot and to align it with the hind foot. To then abduct the entire foot under the talus, keeping the foot in slight supination. As one does abduction of the forefoot, because of the kinematic coupling of the subtalar joint, the heel varus corrects automatically without the need to touch the heel. And finally, the last step in the correction is the correction of ankle equinus by doing a percutaneous tenotomy of the tendo Achilles. So here, as you can see, is a little baby with a bilateral club foot, which is extremely severe. And with the help of four to five plasters, you can see that the entire foot is well corrected. So it's important to understand how well the foot is molded, similar to the picture that I showed you from Kite's textbook that the key here is to, is to form a really well-molded plaster, which is well-fitting, which will actually correct the deformity within a span of five or six casts, followed by a tendoaculist tenotomy. So how does one learn the Ponsetti technique? I think over the last 10 or 15 years, the, the, this phenomenon has really spread all over the world. And in fact, in Africa, uh, has been the leaders in showing that the Ponsetti method can be developed in the form of a program by teaching medical officers, orthopedic surgeons, physiotherapists, the essence of the Ponsetti method by the form of various training workshops. And we have now associated ourselves with various non-governmental associations and non-profits like Cure, Miracle Feet, and various other organizations which help us to train various medical specialists. And the key here is to form a standardized curriculum of lectures, a hands-on workshop using foot models and real cases of babies with club foot, have a standardized set of teaching presentations, small number of participants so as to have a high faculty to student ratio and active mentoring by, the, by faculty. And I know that many of you all have attended club foot training courses in various parts of uh, various countries of Africa. And thanks to the efforts of the uh, Global Clubfoot Initiative, which is based in Oxford in London, we have also developed an Africa uh, curriculum for training of, uh, of medical personnel in the Ponsetti method. We have also developed certain uh, apps which will soon become available to most of you. Those of you who are interested can later on write to me once these are developed well. Uh, this will be a form of mobile applications as an e-learning tool to supplement our in-person training, which has various modules of anatomy, the pathophysiology, the reason why the Ponsetti method works, the technique of various steps of casting, manipulation, and tenotomy. We have also developed a 3D model of Clubfoot by working with a Spanish company which specializes in making medical 3D models. And this will be a fascinating way to learn not only the Ponsetti method, but how clubfoot, the anatomy of, of clubfoot, the various structures, how they are aligned, and to understand the Ponsetti method of manipulation uh, in various anatomical planes. And this is a work in progress. I assume within the next year or so, we'll be rolling this out in various uh, programs in Africa. I will now wind up by talking a little bit about the older child because we know that the Ponsetti method is the standard of care for the younger child. But coming from countries in Africa and Asia, I know that we have similar characteristics. And we have a large number of children who come to us in the walking age, that's usually after the age of one, two, or even older, who have never had a club foot treatment before. Or if they've had treatment, the, the foot has relapsed once again. And this is a real challenge for us who work in low-income countries uh, and how do we treat this. We must understand that in the walking age, uh, things are a little different because walking imposes unique challenges on a deformed foot. There are increasing soft tissue contractures, the deformation of the tarsal bones. These foot are feet are generally stiffer. They have callosities, skin fissures, and bursae. 
And I would like to draw your attention to this wonderful uh, monogram written by Dr. Norgrove Penny in 2005, where he described the various modalities of treatment of the neglected clubfoot. So in short, through this algorithm, you can see that uh, for many years, we used to believe that the treatment of an older child and we used to follow an, an algorithm which included starting with a soft tissue release. If we found that there were persistent deformities, we would resort to certain types of bony surgeries, mainly on the lateral aspect. And depending upon which deformity persisted or recurred, we were treated by a variety of different soft tissue and bony surgeries, going from mild forms of surgeries to uh, fairly severe uh, and major surgeries like a triple arthrodesis or even a telectomy. So if you look at the various soft tissue procedures, you can, you'll realize that you have a variety of soft tissue procedures described. You can either have a posterior release where one releases only the posterior structures, which includes the tendoiculus, the ankle, and the subtalar capsulotomies, or what can be much more extensive by doing a posterior medial or even a posterior medial lateral release using either a Cincinnati approach or the turco posterior medial approach. And I think the incision is not important, whether you go medially, posterior medially, or circumferentially. The important aspect is to release all the important structures, medially, posterior laterally, and posteriorly. And I've already shown you the various steps of these soft tissue procedures. And I know that 20 years ago, when I was a younger resident, like most of you are, Surgeries was a treatment of choice for club feet. We would start casting the, the children when they came to us. And by the age of six or eight months, we found that many of them would not respond to surgery, uh, would not respond to plasters, and therefore go ahead with these soft tissue releases between uh, eight to 12 months of age. And with the Ponsetti method becoming popular over the last 20 years or so, almost all of these children have now been treated by conservative methods. So here's an example of a six-year-old child who came to us walking on these severely deformed feet. And as you can see, uh, at two years follow-up and at 14 years follow-up, if you've done the surgeries well, respecting the soft tissues, not causing cartilage damage, soft tissue surgeries can give you a good result. However, they require a large amount of expertise. Do not take these surgeries lightly. And it's always been said that a poorly performed conservative treatment still has better results than a poorly performed surgery. So take these surgeries really seriously. They require a high level of skill. But if it's done well, with good respect of soft tissue and, and the soft cartilage, you can get a good result, despite the bad rap that surgery has been having in recent publications. But of course, you also see children who come to us much older. And I'm sure that each and every one of you who has uh, worked in your community hospitals will see children who come to us even later. And your example, for example, is an 18-year-old boy with bilateral anterior club feet. And unfortunately, at this age, sometimes uh, even soft tissue surgeries won't help. And you have to go ahead with more disabling surgeries, such as a triple arthrodesis done in the form of the modified lambda-nodi procedure. And here's the result on a short-term follow-up. Remember that, again, these feet are plantigrade, but not necessarily pain-free. And it's important to note how these feet will do in the long term because these are quite radical and disabling surgeries. They give you a good short-term cosmetic and functional correction. But in the long term, they can become painful and have, have a lot of recurrences. This is another method described as a one-stage procedure by one of my colleagues from India, where you do a veg tarsectomy because he frequently had pa patients coming to him from tribal areas where patients wanted a one-step uh, go back to the villages as soon as possible. And he developed this veg tarsectomy where you removed a large wedge of bone dorsolaterally, excise the extra skin, and then pin it with K-wires and do a one Good in the short term, I'm a little skeptical of what will happen in the long term when you have uh, joints which have been violated and uh, therefore fused. Uh, in India, of course, and I'm sure in some countries in Africa, you are using many external fixators. This was also popular many years with us. And I'm trying to show you that for treating these walking age children, there should be various tools in armamentarium. Uh, as an, as an orthopedic surgeon, we must have 
uh, skills to treat the club foot with various different modalities and finally choose the one that you're most comfortable with. So I'm showing you a range of different modalities that uh, have been used. This is a mini external fixator being devised in India, which is called the Jess fixator, devised by a surgeon, a hand surgeon called Dr. B. B. Joshi. And as you can see, if it's done well, again, by doing soft tissue distraction. So this is basically, again, the Ponsetti method, utilize, utilizing an external fixator, which is low profile, which has pins rather than uh, shan screws and gives you a fairly good result if done well. And then, of course, for the Elizarov enthusiasts, we know that in the older child, the Elizarov fixator also works extremely well. There have been various reports over the last uh, several decades, uh, not only from uh, uh, Russia, but also from Europe, especially Italy, where it became popular, from the US by Dror Paley, who have shown that in these very old uh, severe deformities, the Elizabeth fixator can also give a good result. But you have to understand that each of these surgeries require a high degree of skill and expertise. So the question is, uh, with this role of the Ponsetti method in the younger child, could we use this method in the older child as well? I've shown you the various tools that we have in armamentarium, and you can pick and choose the one you like best. But we were intrigued by the Ponsetti method, which we adopted more than 20 years ago. And the question that was always topmost in our minds that since we have used the Ponsetti method in the younger child, will it have a role to play in the older child as well? And since the last 15 years, we have expanded the use of the Ponsetti method to older children as well, starting with children up to one year and then gradually increasing our age limit till the oldest child that we have treated with the Ponsetti method is 10 years of age. And for those of you interested, we published our results in 56 children. Uh, in the Journal of Pediatric Orthopedics last year. And of course, there are several unanswered questions when it comes to the older child. How many casts are required? Uh, should you do a tenotomy rather than doing an open Z lengthening? How do you brace these walking age children? Because obviously, they're not going to use the braces for 23 hours in the day like the younger child. And what's the risk of relapse? So to answer some of these questions, we did our study. And I will show you here, this is a very busy slide, but I'll focus on just a few things that we had children from 1 to 10 years of age, with a median age being around 3 years. And we found that we had two groups. Group 1 are the ones who had never had any treatment before, but group 2 were children who had treatment in other centers and who then relapsed. And in both of them, between 5 to 7 plasters, we could get a correction. Though, of course, you can see there are some outliers. There are some patients who required 17 plasters. Some who required about 12 plasters. But the good news is that we got primary correction in, in all of these patients, and that's surprising. 100% uh, of the children in the untreated group needed a tenotomy, whereas about 70% needed it in the relapse group because some of these children already had previous tenotomies. But the relapse rate is pretty high, ranging from 30 to 45%. So these are children in whom you can get a correction with the Ponsetti method, but the chance of relapse is quite high in them. And here are a few cases for those who don't believe that the Ponsetti method actually works. Here's a six-year-old girl with a completely untreated club foot. You can see how severe that deformity is. Fifteen years ago, I would say this needs soft tissue surgery, maybe bony correction, might need a fixator. But here are both of these children at a short-term follow-up of around three years of age, treated only with the Ponsetti method and a tendoacalyst tenotomy. And I have now become a very strong proponent of the Ponsetti method, even in older children, because I feel there's no harm in trying this method, even for rigid and severe deformities. To give you an even bigger perspective, here's a 26-year-old lady whose daughter had club foot treated by us. And then the father brought the wife from the village, saying that my wife also has club foot. And since my daughter has been, her feet have been so well corrected, can you do the same for my wife as well? And here I will show you that with 19 plasters done serially, followed by limited surgery. So our method has worked entirely in this, in this lady at this older age. But combining conservative treatment with very limited soft tissue radical surgery. All that we have done is a plantar fascia release, a tendoacalyst tenotomy. And then because she had a residual curved border, we did a lateral column shortening through the cuboid. And by 
casting combined with very limited surgery. Being free, planting great foot, which you can. And this is not just our results from India, but you can see from various other countries around are shown. So to wind up, I would say that the take-home messages about treatment is that the Ponsetti method is the standard of care for comfort. Of course, soft tissue surgeries, fixators, osteotomies, arthrodesis were all traditional options. And they occasionally do have a place even in 2020 for treating resistant and recalcitrant deformities. But I would uh, uh, suggest to you that the Ponsetti method combined with judicious, limited soft tissue or bony surgery is an attractive option today, even for the older child. Of course, we must be aware that the risk of relapse is high and regular follow-up is the key. Thank you for, so much for your attention.